Welcome back to Cowboy Survival. I'm Richard, and it is just a beautiful, gorgeous day on a Sunday afternoon here in early fall. And I can't imagine a better place to be than outdoors talking to you guys about the stuff I love, which is outdoor equipment, outdoor survival, and outdoor skills. So what we're going to talk about today is an item I picked up at Walmart uh, about a year ago, the Walmart 4-in-1, or I should say the Ozark Trail, 4-in-1 camp stove and stand. Uh, I did a video on this about 14 months ago. Uh, some of you may have seen it. It was one of my very first videos, wasn't as high a quality as I would have liked. So I thought I would redo the video and maybe mention some things in this video that I didn't talk about before. I've used this camp stove a lot and I've learned a lot about it. Uh, mostly what I've learned is it's a pretty reliable piece of equipment. I'm pretty happy with it. So let's just take this thing out, see what's in the package, and then we're going to see how to set it up and use it. So when you open it up and the package comes on a carded package uh, and, and what you're going to get is this. Uh, usually you find it if you go into the camping section, you look about eye level or a little above. It's where all the other stoves and things are. Uh, this is going to be sitting there sort of just to the right usually of where you see all the little fuel canisters. Uh, it's going to be on a card. It's going to be in a box and the cards will be set one behind the other. Uh, and it's about $14.95. Now what do you get when you open this package up? Well, you're going to get a set of instructions. So if you've never used one of these things before, Okay, so it'll tell you, show you how to use it. Now, uh, what's in this package? First of all, I can't figure out why they call it a four-in-one, other than it's got four pieces with it. So let's see what those four pieces are. So the first piece I pull out of the bag is going to be the stand, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Uh, it, it basically looks like this when it's setting up. You're going to have a fuel canister on it, and we'll see how to use that. The second piece is going to be this adapter that comes with it. So this adapter is pretty cool. It is um, uh, designed so that you can use it with the Coleman fuel bottles, those dark green fuel bottles. Basically, this piece here attaches to your the base of your stove. And then this piece down here plugs into the, the Coleman fuel bottle and it will uh, allow you to use those big fuel bottles. Now, the third piece is going to be the stove itself. The stove itself is pretty small. Um, uh, as you can see, it just fits right in the palm of my hand. A uh, really nice small unit. Um, and we'll see how to take this thing and how to use it and how to put it together. The fourth piece, to be honest, is the back. Okay, so you get the four pieces. You get the stand, the adapter, the stove, and the bag. Now, the adapter itself, I'm gonna tell you, this adapter is probably worth about nine or ten dollars all by itself. These things are expensive to buy just apart from the stove. So these adapters are worth quite a bit and allow you to use alternative fuel sources other than just the isobutane that I'm going to show you here. Um, so that's a valuable piece. So, so you have to ask yourself, are you getting this with your um, stove, so the rest of the stove is only costing you $4.95. The stove and the bag and the stand is only $4.95 basically, because I think that's about a $10 piece. So we'll put that back in the bag so we don't lose it. And now we'll go see how we set this thing up. So we're going to start with looking at how we uh, set this thing up. This is a little isobutane fuel canister. I think I got this at uh, Academy Sports. You can get them a lot of places, and different companies have different versions of these little fuel canisters. Now, this one is 110 grams. As you can see, you can get them bigger. Uh, there's a lot of them, they come taller than this. Uh, I like this one because it's small. It fits upside down inside my Stanley two cup uh, cook set. So it makes it a real nice, uh, handy item to have. So what I'm gonna do is take this stand. If you look at this stand, you see it's got notches in it. Basically different size canisters are gonna fit in this. And I'm gonna put the, uh, the bottom lip, I'm gonna use the middle of this one, so I'll put it in the middle here, it'll fit here, and I'll put the middle one, you basically gotta move this around till that middle one fits. Then what you're gonna do is you hold, you notice these two, they, they move, right? So I'm gonna hold these other two steady, and I'm gonna take this piece and just move it around, and it's gonna click right into place, just like that. Now that's pretty steady, it's pretty sturdy, it's gonna sit right where I need it to sit, and I can set my stove now right on top of that. Um, and I don't have to worry about it falling over, because what's going to happen is I'm going to take this stand and I'm going to set my the stove and then I'm going to set this on top and you don't want this thing turning over, right? 
so you want this to be a nice steady. So the more steady this base is, the better off you're going to be uh, when you actually go into the field. So let's now take a look at how we actually attach the stove and turn it on. So once I've got the fuel canister attached to the stand and I set that down, the next thing is going to be to attach the stove itself to the fuel canister. Now a couple of things about this stove. First of all, you do, when you attach this, you're going to screw it on. Do not turn this upside down. Once this little post inside here pierces the membrane inside this can, if you turn it over, the fuel will leak out and you don't want that. It'll go all over the place. It's a mess. So once you screw this on, you need to keep it upright. Now, the next thing is the way you do this. So, so the, this is your little valve, this little wire right here, and it's sort, of used, it's sort of like clipped in. And the way to undo that is just simply put a little bit of pressure on this bar up here where my finger is, and just pull it toward the burner just a little bit, just to put a little pressure on it, and this bar will pop right out of that. So again, it won't go, but you pull it back, and it'll go under that, it sort of serves, locks it in place, and then you just simply pull this too, and it'll spring down. Now, a couple of things about this. This right now, when you first undo this, is in the open position. This is really important. You have to turn it clockwise just a little bit to close that. If you don't, as soon as you screw this on here, you're going to hear gas coming out because it's in the open position. So take it and turn it just a little clockwise. It'll be a little cockeyed like that. And now you'll be able to, uh, to screw this on without gas coming out. I don't know why I still have the tags on this thing. Who knows, right? So we just simply take this and we fit it on and we start screwing it on. Now I screw it on using the orange base. I do not want to screw it on using the other. Now you can actually take this and you don't want to screw it on with this thing still up because if you do, it, again, gas is going to leak out. So once you get that down, screw it on and you'll feel when it gets nice and snug. And you want to snug it up so fuel doesn't leak out. Uh, while you're cooking, you want it nice and snug. And there's a seal in there, a little rubber seal that'll keep that there. Now, you also notice there's a little piezo pump right here, right? This little snapper, it's going to light it. And when you hit that, it gives a little click. That's going to create the spark that's going to light your stove. Uh, and we'll do that in a moment. Now, the next thing is these pieces here. This is what your pot is going to sit on. And so you simply take this and it'll spin around and it'll stop spinning when it reaches where it needs to go. It's designed to go a quarter each time, and you can take it and put it right into place. There you go, they're all in place. Then, then these little pieces will flip out to accommodate a larger pot. So I can take my, my two cup camp stove or camp pot from Stanley and set it right on there. Works just fine, um, and it'll boil water in there in a few minutes. Now, once you have all that done, it's time to turn the stove on. So I always turn it so this way my right hand is on this, my, my left hand is here ready to flip this. You can do it any way you want to, I suppose, um, if you're right-handed. But then if you're this way, you got to reach around it. So I always turn it so that the, the little piezo starter is right here in front of me. And then um, this. So I'll turn this. And when I turn this, you will hear the gas come on. So let's listen. You can hear that gas. I simply hit this until it pumps. I see it's not doing right now. Sometimes it doesn't want to uh, spark the way I want it to. Um, so I, what you do is just turn it off for a minute, let the gas dissipate, turn it on, and try again. There it goes. So I can turn that flame down. I can turn it up really high. You can see that. And I can boil water really, really fast with that stove. Again, sometimes that little piezo lighter doesn't work right away. So what you want to do is you want to have like an extra lighter or something close by. So if that doesn't work, you can use the lighter and that will do it or a match. I don't like using matches, but a lighter works really, really well. I've seen people do it with a, with a, a ferro rod. I don't really like doing that either, but that'll work. So now when you're ready for this, you take, take this thing, turn it clockwise again, and it'll turn that right off. And once it's turned off, you're ready to go. Just let it cool down. Once it cools down, you can pack it back in the package and you're ready to head home. So there you have it. The Ozark Trail 4-in-1 Camp Stove and Stand. Really handy little item to put in your backpack. Very lightweight. Maybe not as powerful or as fast as one of those more expensive brands that you might find. It doesn't have that rocket kind of feel to it. Uh, it doesn't have that same 
feel that, that maybe the jet boil has, but it's a really nice budget little stove to keep, take camping with you. Now, a couple of downsides of this. Uh, first thing to remember, anytime you use this kind of a stove, if you run out of fuel, the stove is useless to you. So you need to have an alternative way to make fire in case you need it. Now, if you're camping above the tree line, it may be difficult to find wood. It may be difficult to get a fire going. So you need to make sure you have plenty of this fuel with you if you're camping above the tree line. If you're camping within the tree line, you're always going to be able to find fire and fuel, I think. Um, so uh, make sure you have a ferro rod with you, some other way to start fire other than this. Now, the other thing about this, this is an advantage of cooking like this, is that when you cook like this and you cook over with something like, like a stainless steel container or a titanium container, it's not going to, to damage the outside of the container. It just makes it hot. If you use wood, you're gonna get all that soot and charring and, and other stuff on the outside of your canister. And then if you put it in your backpack, it's gonna get all over everything. Uh, and when you get home, you wanna clean it with Brillo to get all that black stuff off of there. Um, so that black stuff can cake up on the outside of your pot if you're using wood fire. You don't get that with these uh, fuel canister stoves. Uh, they burn really clean, and as a result, your pots don't get all messy and dirty on the outside. As I said, you don't want to turn this thing over while this thing is attached, because if you do, you can spill your fuel out, and this fuel is going to be very, very precious to you. Um, I don't think there's a lot of other downsides to this. The Coleman bottles are a little heavy, but you know, that's, that's something. Also remember, if you take these with you on the trail and you empty out a canister, do not throw it away on the trail. Always pack out all your garbage. Uh, keep the trails in the wilderness as clean and pristine as possible. You don't want our manufactured goods littering up the, uh, the woods. And, and the fact that this is metal and is technically biodegradable is irrelevant. Pack this back up and pack it out with you. Well, other than that, I hope this was a really helpful video. Hopefully you learned something. Maybe you found your product that you're going to like and try at some point down the road. In the meantime, stay strong, stay prepared, have a blessed day, and we'll see you real soon right here on Cowboy Survival.